Hey guys, it's Corbett Lunsford from the Building Performance Workshop. Today is static pressure testing day. Uh, I'm gonna teach you how to do a simple static pressure map so that you can find out a lot of stuff about the system for heating and cooling a home. And this counts for any home. It also works potentially for commercial systems. So we're gonna be testing a residential system here in a lovely showroom. You can see that I have behind me a furnace. I'm gonna need a few things in addition to this furnace or air conditioner to test. I'm going to need a digital manometer that measures in inches of water column. This happens to be a Retrotech DM32 smart gauge. At least one static pressure probe. That's the kind with the little 90 degree turn in it and the bullet head and a pressure hose. I have two, you could deal with as much as four today. We're not gonna worry about that. I'm gonna run this as if you were running this out in the field in real life. Now static pressure is the pressure that is static any time air is moving in any direction inside of a duct system. It pushes in all directions, it's the ballooning effect. The thing about static pressure is that it is more greedy than velocity pressure, which is the other kind of pressure we have in the duct system. The two of those together equals the total pressure in the entire duct system. And this fan behind me that is in the bottom cabinet of this furnace is only capable of producing so much total pressure. So if I allow static pressure to eat all of the, sat the total pressure that's available, there is no pressure left that the fan can create that will actually push any air. This is critically important because the whole point of the system is to move air around the house. And most of the time, no one is measuring static pressure in any system that I have ever been in. So I've got my two static pressure probes in my hands. They are both plugged into the inputs of channel A and channel B. I'm gonna take uh, channel A and I'm gonna put it before the fan. Now the fan is in here, it's the giant fan that's the heart of every system. It's called the air handler or the blower. The second probe I'm going to put after the blower. Now to find a place to insert this, you have to actually drill a hole in this very nice piece of equipment. Why the manufacturers don't put a hole for you to use in there, no one knows. They will someday once they get their act together. But for right now, you're gonna to have to take a drill with a unibit on it, which is a stepped up drill bit and drill in just south of where the coil is sitting. Now really top-notch air conditioning installers are starting to include a spacer in here so that they can have the air conditioner sit on top of that spacer and they've got room to drill this hole without drilling into the equipment itself. You want to watch out for the heat exchanger. That is why you're using a stepped up drill bit. So don't use a drill bit that just will go all the way through and punch through because you, you wanna be careful about not puncturing the stuff that's inside this furnace cabinet. It's uh, very important. So you drill right in here. And the secret to all of this is that anyone can step into any furnace closet and take a look at this system. And if there is not a hole drilled in this exact spot, then that means that all of the companies who put their sticker on the return plenum have not tested for this. And that means that you should not call them back. It's that simple. So don't be one of those companies. Make sure that you're doing this test and actually finding out what the blood pressure is. So now that we have drilled our hole, we can put our static pressure probe in. Now it's critically important that you point these static pressure probes into the flow of air. So air is moving up through this furnace system. So both of those probes are pointing down. Uh, now what we are doing is testing the total external static pressure. Total static pressure, meaning both return and supply added together, and external, meaning external to the piece of equipment that has the label on it. Now, inside of every one of these furnaces that has the blower cabinet and the heat exchanger cabinet is going to be a sticker. That sticker is going to tell you how many BTUs per hour the thing produces and how many it eats up and what the uh, electrical draw is and also what the maximum external static pressure is allowed to be. Because of course, static pressure should not be allowed to eat all of the total pressure. It should be kept to a minimum. So it's going to say generally that the maximum is going to be 0.5 inches of water column. That means that external to this box, meaning before anything happens on this side of the blower, and after, right after anything happens on this side of the box, meaning right before the coil, 
we want to take those two measurements and then add them together and that will give us something that hopefully is not more than the maximum on the label, which again is generally half an inch, 0.5 inches of water column. So right now, I've got the green is my return, and I can see that the return on this system, the way that it's running right now, is running 0.38. My supply is running 0.21. So I would add those two numbers together, 0.38, and that's negative, but I don't worry about the negative. I'm just gonna take that number, 0.38, and 0.21, and I get 0.59. Now, in real life, I would be concerned about that. Uh, right now, I've set up a lab situation just to show you how this works. 0.59 exceeds 0.5, and so now my task is to find out what it is that's causing this extra pressure. That's why you're gonna take more measurements than just the ones that I mentioned. So again, total external static pressure is an incredibly important measurement. It is black and white. There is no margin for error. It's either above 0.5 or below 0.5. Below 0.5, good. Above 0.5, bad, because it means that the static is eating up too much. So we're gonna take another measurement right now. We want to know what the pressure drop of the filter and of the coil are. Because first thing that I'm worried about is the returns 0.38 number. That number is pretty high. That's eating most of that 0.59. So I want to know now what the filter pressure drop is. So I can simply take one of my static pressure probes and insert it past the filter. So now I have made a filter sandwich and I've got a probe between the blower and the filter and a probe between the filter and the rest of the ductwork. And what I'm seeing now is I still have 0.38 here, but I can see that the pressure inside that ductwork just past the filter is 0.19. That means fully half of that pressure that we're seeing on the return side is made up of the filter. Now this filter may be built to induce that much pressure. But if that's the case, then we want to check with the manufacturer. Generally, you're going to look for a filter pressure drop of around 0.1. So this is a little bit high, and it might mean that the filter is dirty. It might mean that the filter is too narrow because there's not enough surface area in it. It might mean that it just needs to be changed or that somebody put a dirty sock into my duct's work and it's caught in the filter. So now that I have evaluated that, I would like to also take my coil pressure drop. Now that I have a probe pointing into the airflow just before the coil and one just after the coil, I'm able to see that I'm still getting around my 0.21 for the supply side of the total external. And just past the coil, I'm getting about 0.07. That means that my coil is taking up about 0.14. That's the pressure drop of the air conditioning coil, the evaporator coil that's built into this. That is a pretty normal number. I also now have a number of different tests that I have run just with these four numbers. I took between the filter and the fan, between the coil and the fan, before the filter and after the coil. And I can now tell what the static pressure inside the rest of the ductwork is, essentially the pressure drop of the entire return system and the pressure drop of the entire supply system. The entire return system seems to be at about 0.19, which is a little high. The pressure drop of the supply system is 0.07, which is a little bit low. Interesting. Now I can start to evaluate what I'm going to recommend with my ductwork to fix a possible comfort problem that I got called out for in the first place. Remember that it's not all about just replacing the air conditioner, replacing the furnace. That will not solve a problem that has to do with the system of ductwork that you are plugging these things into. Now, there is a little catch about static pressure. This can be a little confusing. What you should think of it as is a spotlight, and it only sees away from the fan. So when the blower is running, if you have a probe here, it is only seeing away from the fan. In this case, it's seeing everything away from the fan. If you put it down here past the filter, it is not seeing the filter because it's behind it now because it's facing away from the fan. So it sees all of the return ductwork. If I put it up there, 
I am again seeing away from the fan, and I can't see the filter, I can't see this box, I can't see that duct. All I'm seeing is the end of the ductwork at that point. So remember, as you're doing these tests, that first of all, you're only seeing away. Secondly, you want static pressure to be low because then velocity pressure can be higher. You generally are gonna see ductwork designed to be 0.1 inches of water column. That's the design static pressure inside of the ductwork, the supply and the return runs. Incidentally, that's why we run duct tightness tests at 25 pascals because 25 pascals is a tenth of an inch of water column. So I hope that this has been helpful for you. Again, you can watch this video whenever you want. Please recommend it to your friends. You can find this diagnostic inside my book, Home Performance Diagnostics. And please uh, comment below if you have additional tests that you'd like to see run out in the field or that you have seen uh, put to good use in your own business or in uh, the business of your partners. Thank you very much for watching. Tune in next time.